You're watching BBC World News Today with me, Zainab Badawi. More now on our top story in the 50th anniversary of that uprising in Tibet. In a moment, we'll be discussing the international position on a free Tibet and to what extent the West supportive of China and in need of strong diplomatic ties with Beijing. First, this background. Beijing has said that reports of the Tibet issue by what it calls Western anti-China forces are an attempt to demonize China. No company disputes China's claim to sovereignty, but Beijing has blocked all United Nations resolutions on Tibet. The Free Tibet movement has won the sympathy of individuals and groups, many of whom campaign for an independent homeland. Westerners know so much about Tibet is because of the high profile of the Dalai Lama. The West awarded him the Nobel Peace Prize for his efforts in 1989. However, that support is criticized as merely tokenism. Just three recognized China's direct rule over Tibet for the first time and the new US administration has said China's record on human rights would not interfere with its cooperation with Beijing. So how far has this kind of stand on in his dealings with China? Joining us now to discuss this is Dennis Wilder who was President Bush's special assistant and senior director for East Asian Affairs at the National Security Council. He's now at the Brookings Institution. Also from Washington is Kelly Curry. She advised the State Department during the Bush years and is now with the Project 2049 Institute, a think tank based in Washington. Kelly Curry, so do you think that world leaders could do more to put pressure on China over Tibet? Absolutely, they can. There are many opportunities, especially and other times when they're meeting with the Chinese at all levels when world leaders can express their views about the situation in Tibet in a constructive way with the Chinese that helps to see the Chinese this, that there is an opportunity here. They are a threat to them, but that the Dalai Lama provides an opportunity for them to resolve this issue in a much more constructive way than the path that they have currently chosen. Just very quickly, staying with you, Kelly Curry, was there constructive criticism during the Bush years under the Bush administration? I believe that that we always try to, to say to the Chinese, look, you have an opportunity with the Dalai Lama as an interlocutor who is a reasonable person. He has come forward mm -hmm. with reasonable proposals, and you should take this opportunity while you have it. There are a Tibetan world that are not so reasonable okay. and who don't have that same sense of reasonableness about them. Okay, Dennis Wilder, do you hear that kind of same constructive criticism coming from the new Obama administration? Some people say that uh, Hillary Clinton's words about human rights not integration with China on a host of things is a bit worrying. I think Secretary Clinton's remarks were somewhat misunderstood in the media. Uh, the Bush administration, I think, laid a solid foundation with the Chinese government on this issue. As you know, Mrs. Bush, we're very committed to this issue. I expect that when uh, Foreign Minister Yang meets with Secretary Clinton tomorrow, this will be on the agenda. And I think the commitment of the entire U.S. government, not only the executive branch, but certainly is strong and firm in wanting to see forward progress between the Dalai Lama and the Chinese government. So Kelly Curry, perhaps Mrs. Clinton's comments uh, are more nuanced than you might perhaps suggest. Actually, I think they were not as nuanced as they should have been. It's to understand that she's not just speaking to the Chinese leadership, but that she's also speaking to the Chinese people and the Tibetan people, and that her words are being heard by them, not just by the officials that she meets with. And that mm -hmm. when she said something along the lines of want to agree to disagree on human rights and that there are more important issues out there, this really is quite damaging to people who are trying to okay. bring political change in China. Dennis Wan, I'm not going to put you in the difficult position of batting for the uh, Obama <laughs> administration. You're, a, you're in the... But Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> nevertheless, um, it is a difficult balance, isn't it, for any administration to strike between keeping China on stride, being constructive, but also doing what Kelly Curry is suggesting. Absolutely. In the current environment, when we have major turmoil in the world, and China is a key player in that, when we have climate change issues to deal with, 
when you have a situation like we just had in the South China Sea, there is a lot on the U.S.-China agenda. And so it is hard, but always was that you had to make time for this issue. You had to make sure that the Chinese understood that the international community expected China as it modernized, as it reformed, that it would also reform in the political arena. But Dennis Wilder, apart from words and talk to Beijing, I mean, what actually could you do in terms of leverage over Tibet? Not a lot, really. Well, I think that uh, we did accomplish a great deal in terms of getting through to some on the Chinese side that to listen to the Dalai Lama. There is an important concern, and I think Kelly Curry raised it earlier, and that is the Dalai Lama is a man of peace. He's a man who they can deal with. There is a concern that radicalization of the Tibetans will occur uh, in and I think they need to think about dealing with the Dalai Lama now so that they don't have major problems in the future. Okay, Kelly Curry, how do you judge the position of the rest of the international community? I mean, we saw Gordon Brown not receiving the Dalai Lama at Downing Street when he, he mm -hmm. nevertheless, um, Nicolas Sarkozy in France was a lot warmer towards him. Is there any coherence, do you think? Well, I think that we we tried during the Bush administration to try to increase the coherence, and we did work a lot with our European allies and with other like-minded countries to try to coordinate on on messaging and on and not so much on tactics, but more on messaging and on the overall kind of approach. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is something that needs to continue going forward and yeah. needs. Or so, because the Chinese do like to pick off the yeah. like minded countries, the Western countries, and play them off of each other, okay. especially on human rights. Okay. And I think that they do um, do more and do better when they stand okay. together and have a coherent position. Very briefly, same point to you, Dennis Wilde. Greater coherence, perhaps internationally, on Tibet and China. I think we actually have seen that. If you look at after the president met publicly with the uh, Dalai Lama last year for the Congressional Medal, you saw other nations' leaders come out in support of the Dalai Lama. So I think that the international community more and more understands that this is a man of peace, a man that needs to be supported, a movement that needs to the assistance, um, because what they are really looking for is autonomy within China. Dennis Wilder, Kelly Curry, thank you both very much. Coming up later in this program, in talking